Hi, my name is Cindy Rang from the Fabric Patch in Efreda, Washington, and we're going to show you how to make our rag rug. This is just a really simple project and it can be essentially free. If you've just got a lot of leftover things that you want to use, this makes a really nice project. It can also be any size and any shape you'd like. A lot of us were making the jelly roll rugs this past year, which is a lot of fun, but there's a lot of work involved because you're sewing all of your strips together, you sew your batting in their strips, and then you sew everything around. It's, it's, um, it's a nice looking rug. This is totally different from that. Shaggy, first of all, and also um, just two, two simple steps. Sewing down your strips, cutting your strips, and that's it. It's similar to chenille, and we sort of use the chenille technique. If you're not very familiar with chenille, we have two other videos um, in our YouTube lineup about chenille, and one goes through all of the basics about the fabric. So we're gonna cover a little bit of that, but some of what we say um, changes a little bit with the rug, and you'll see what I mean. So the rug, let's just talk about first um, the things that you need. First of all, we did ours with two and a half inch strips. The truth is you can do any size you want. If you have a million two inch strips left over or you want a shorter bit of a rag with maybe one and a half inch strips, you can do whatever you want. You just want them to be consistent. If you've got leftover one and a half inch strips you're using here and two and a half inch here, it will not look right. Your rug will look like it has some sort of a mange issue going on. So I would just suggest that you're consistent. The reason that we stuck with two and a half inch strips is because there's so many of them. If you don't want to do the cutting yourself, there's all kinds of options for you to go ahead and use the purchased jelly roll um, or have maybe some leftovers from something else. So with your two and a half inch strips, there's different fabrics that you can use. If you go to our chenille video, we tell you that Batik doesn't chenille well. And it doesn't. The reason that it doesn't is it has such a tight weave and it goes through so many different steps for the um, for the batiking process with actually even a little bit of wax on it that it, the fibers just don't burst the same way. However, in a rug, if you look up close, what you'll see is the batik actually curls. So it's kind of a cool effect. It isn't really chenille. Uh, you know, like we would think of, but it's a really nice effect. So where you might not want to use batik for a chenilling effect, this entire rug is batik fabric and I really like the effect. I think it looks kind of cool. So you can certainly have purchased two and a half inch strip kits or you can cut your own. Um, one that always works 100% of the time are the woven strips. Woven fabric looks fantastic when it's chenilled because woven fabric is exactly that. It's not dyed, it's just woven threads and that's what gives you the color. And so when it's chenilled, you see nothing but solid color because you see all of the threads that have kind of popped up. So it really makes a beautiful rug that looks better and better and better the more you wash it. But if you look at this, here's an example of a flannel. So here's the right side of the flannel, but see here's the wrong side. So see all of the color is right here. And sometimes you're going to see where there's not so much color. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. The one thing about a chenilling or a ragged project is that you really don't know what it's going to look like until you're done. Sometimes you're um, very surprised thinking that there's going to be way more red involved than there is or way more blue. So it's just one of those things. Um, with, with woven fabrics, it's pretty consistent. The other thing that you can do though, I'm not saying that you cannot use cotton, you just have to be prepared to be able to see that wrong side. So it almost comes out a little bit more muted. But if you have some leftover strips or a really fun 30s jelly roll that you want to use and maybe you want to add some white just to kind of make it look more bright or pastel anyway, that always looks great. The other thing that you can do is you can do solids. Solids, that's another example of a fabric that does not have a right or a wrong side. So if you have solids, if you want something that's very colorful or something that's just a few colors, solids will always work well. 
If you feel like you want a floral rug, just because this is a beautiful uh, jelly roll with beautiful floral pieces, you just have to keep in mind that whenever you're doing chenilling projects, you're really not going to see as much of that fabric as you think. So again, you might think that this is a beautiful floral fabric, but when you're doing it as a chenille or a rag project, you're gonna see bits of color. You may or may not see specifically little flowers. So keeping that in mind, the best idea for a rag rug is just to use up all those leftover little pieces. If you find that you have just some leftover strips and a whole bunch of them because you just, I mean, why are you gonna throw that away? That's not garbage. So you save all of these little things and you put all of these two and a half inch strips in a bin. If you have things that seem to make some sense together or maybe they don't, it would make a fantastic rug. The other thing that you might have is maybe you have some fabrics that are left over from a quilt and maybe you want to make some small little rug or big long rug, whatever you want to be able to match in that bedroom. You can do the same thing. Just take a few pieces that are left over maybe add a few other pieces because you're roughly going to need, you're really going to need for a rug this size, which is about a yard, which is about 36 by 40 is roughly the size of this rug. You're going to need approximately three jelly rolls to do this diagonal um, or about nine yards. I know that seems like a lot and when I show you how you're sewing it, you'll see why. Um, so make sure you have more than you think you need so you're not scrambling at the last minute and you have half of your rug or three quarters of your rug looking one way and the rest of it is, you know, sparsely put together with other bits. So make sure you have enough. I just want to show you just really quickly how to cut some fast strips because again, if you have some leftover bits from something and you need to cut your own two and a half inch strips, the easiest thing is to use a shape cut. If you're not familiar with the shape cut, it's an acrylic ruler that has a little slice in it every half inch. So all you do is you just line it up on top of your fabric and it has numbers along the end here. And so I'm just gonna line this up. Okay, this is 12 inches. So when you have your fabric, you have to make sure that your fabric is, is folded so that it's less than 12 inches. So what I did is I just folded that over just a little bit because let me show you what will happen is we're back to lining this up and we're cutting this. I cut off my zero, but see, I only go to here. So if my fabric hangs off a little bit farther, it's gonna be a little bit strange. So anyway, so I'm gonna to cut to get my nice clean edge and then I'm gonna come over two and a half inches, which is right there. Two and a half plus two and a half is five, which is right there. And then seven and a half and then 10. And if I had enough fabric, I would go to 12 and a half. And then what happens is I just throw these edge pieces away and then I have these perfect two and a half inch strips. So it's super fast to go ahead and cut that way. Your other option is just to go ahead and cut with your regular ruler. And I just wanna show you something really fast. And when you're cutting strips, you just, my suggestion, and now again, this is a 24 inch ruler, so we're fine to go ahead and leave this. We've got our fold here and our salvage here, so we're fine to go ahead and leave this without folding one more time. So a lot of people, when they're cutting strips, they want to use their ruler to, um, uh, to measure. And then you end up with these funny little dog legs and strange measurements. What my suggestion would be is to go ahead and use the ruler to measure and cut behind the ruler. So all I did is I cut first to go ahead and give myself a nice clean edge. And then I'm gonna come over and I'm cutting a two and a half inch strip. So that's one, two and a half. So I'm going to line this up right here on the edge because now what's happened is I have, what I'm cutting is fully being held 
by my ruler. So I don't worry about something that's sliding at all. I also, I've talked before about the Quilter Select rulers. They just don't slide at all. So I've cut that. I'm gonna move this strip out of the way. Oh, change my blade. And then do it again. So then what I'm doing is I'm lining up. So I've got one, two and a half and cutting that. And the, the difference is, I have to even think for a second, how do, how do they do it? They, I think they line it up over here, right? They go, they count one, two and a half, put it here, and then they cut here. And again, what'll happen is if things will kind of slip just a little bit, you can end up with kind of a funny little cut. So anyway, that's how I always do it, is use your ruler to hold your fabric in place while you're cutting. So anyway, same thing, two and a half inch strips. Um, and again, the, the reason that we use two and a half inch strips is just because of the availability. If you have leftover bits, if you want to cut a bunch of stuff up, and plus we, we like the size of it. We think that it, you know, it's kind of that nice um, squishy feeling rug. So that's what's on the top of it is is a whole bunch of strips. The, the number of strips will vary depending upon how close you put it together, whether you di do diagonal or straight, and the size of your rug. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. The only other thing that you need is the backing for your rug. And there's a couple different things that you can use. I like monk's cloth. The reason that I like monk's cloth is because it's just a durable, um, even weave fabric that will last for a long time. It's also just a little bit thicker. So monk's cloth is not horribly expensive and it comes in, it comes in quite a few colors. I think we have six or seven different colors. Um, you want to make sure that you pre-wash it because uh, your quilter's cotton is really not going to shrink at all. We do not pre-wash our strips because we want everything to either curl or fray or whatever is going to happen when you make your rag rug, but you do want to pre-wash this. So cut it the size that you want, and if you want a, a long rectangular rug, if you want a round rug, if you want a um, whatever shape you want. It doesn't make any difference. Make this the way that you want it and then you're ready to go ahead and stitch on top. Your other option besides monk's cloth is you could use linen. Um, linen though is about two to three dollars more per yard but again it's just a nice heavy durable going to last forever kind of rug. I'm just going to tell you this rug is gosh what Brianna seven years old seven years old, they, they don't wear out. You're using a good quilt quality, quilt store quality cotton, and it's gonna look good, it's gonna look better. Every time you wash it, it'll look better, better, better. And so you want to make sure that the backing isn't something that's going to wear out. Um, one thing about your backing is when you prepare your backing, so let's say that you've just cut your piece, you do have to hem it. You do have to do something just to make sure that the back of your rug looks okay. And if you feel like this color is not the right color, then you can, you can add something to it. And let me just show you for just a second what I mean by that. Um, you see all of this raggedy stuff in here, but if you notice, See, this is the background. There is just a little bit, you'll see stuff that's in between there. So you want something that is going to hide in there a little bit. So if this was my background and this was the same piece that I was using, what would happen is a lot of that would show through and your rug would be a little bit more tan uh, because you wouldn't be seeing those little dark specks in there. So you just have to decide what you want for your background. So if you're doing mostly a blue rug, just pick a just pick a blue monk's cloth or a blue linen. Pick something that you'd like. If you can't quite find the right color and you want something to be nearly white or a little bit brighter, what you can do is just go ahead and put a fabric on it. So what I did with this fabric, let me just show you so that it makes sense, is I just put right sides together. So if this is my fabric, and let's pretend this is my monk's cloth. So you just put it down, and then I sewed all the way around, leaving just a space open. 
and when I left that space open, I turned the whole thing right side out. If you don't have a purple thing, these are really nice for turning out corners, and you can just poke those in there. Um, the purple thing has another purpose too, and it's also a stiletto. So there's a little eye right there. So if you're, you know, um, putting uh, elastic in something, it works really well. So you're gonna pull that right side out and then after you've done that, then I did go around and I just sort of stitched the whole thing down. That just gives my rug a really nice binding edge on the back side. You really don't see this much uh, because of course all of this sort of hangs over, but it's just nice to have it have that nice finished look. One other little tip is that what's going to happen when we start sewing this is we have to draw lines on this. So if your background fabric is a plaid, then it's just one of those nice little tips because all of these lines have already been drawn for you. We like to do the diagonal rug. It just, there's something about it that, that looks nice. Um, if you would rather do just lines, you can do whatever pattern you want. It doesn't really make any difference, but no matter what, you're going to want to draw those lines down because you have to have something that you're following. So you could do stripes, you could do whatever, um, and you just have to sort of look for those fabrics. So we have a lot of different diagonal plaids, diagonal stripes, different things in different collections that would work perfect. If you find something that's a little bit farther apart, it doesn't matter. I still let me grab this up from underneath here so you can see this. I probably would still go ahead and use this one. I wouldn't put another line. I would just sort of eyeball where that next one goes. And I'll show you what I mean by that because we'll go ahead and go to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine. You really don't need a specific uh, foot for this. Uh, quarter inch is always kind of a nice idea, but it doesn't really matter. Again, you just want to be consistent. What's nice about this is that it's easily a beginner project. You almost can't mess up. One thing I'm going to mention is that you do want your thread to match. When we go back and look at the other rug, I'm going to show you where we were using brown uh, thread and then for some reason we switched to another color because you will see your thread. This is going to be a primarily white and speckled gray rug, so I've got white thread in my machine. So the reason that Again, we liked that diagonal plaid as all of these lines are here. So I started sewing a few of the strips down just so you didn't have to watch the tedious little start, 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 start. But you're gonna start at the end and you're just going to sew these on and then you just keep going. So what happens is here's my next two and a half inch strip. So I'm just going to fold this over and you don't have to press anything and you don't have to pre-cut anything. You're just going to press and cut as you go. So I'm gonna fold this over wrong sides together. Get this up at my sh machine. And if you can see here, so here's my line, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang this over about a half an inch, lining that up on my line, and I'm gonna come over. And then the other thing that you want to do is you want to back stitch because most of the time in quilting we end up sewing over all of our stitches but in this case we're starting and stopping and nothing is going to come up here so I'm going to come in I'm going to hit my back and then I'm going to come forward again stop for just a second reposition fold just make sure you're not pulling anything and see I'm just lining it up right on that line and I'm just going to sew this down. And when I get to the end, I'm going to do the same thing. Back stitch, cut this off. And then what's gonna happen is same thing, I'm going to come out about a half an inch and cut this off. Now, you're going to think that you want to cut that diagonally, but what would happen is, let's just pretend that we did that. Let's pretend that this is off this way, and let's pretend that you cut it this way, thinking that this is the edge. Well, if that happens when all of this stands up, look what you have. You have this really weird, strange piece sort of left over there. Plus, when you go up to your next one, you've wasted a lot of fabric because as you go up, this is what's going to be on your end up here, which isn't quite right. 
And so if you just do straight across with the strip here, this all stands up and it all stands up the same. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go up and do another one. And I tend to kind of, you know, mix up my strips just a little bit. Usually I'll cut off my salvages as I go. Just gonna fold it again, wrong sides together. Come back up here to my next spot, hang this over about a half an inch, line it up with my next line. And then I'm going to backstitch. Oh. distracted by my thread sewing kind of messy here all right line that up on my line and again not pull it and sew this down and I'm just gonna keep doing this so you can see why it's really nice to have a printed fabric because otherwise this would have been the tedious part is measuring with my ruler and drawing all of those lines. If you do feel like you need to do that because you can't find a plaid that you like or it's just not the right color or I don't know, whatever reason, then um, you do want to use a water-soluble marker. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to cut this off. And again, I'm cutting it off straight with the strip about a half an inch past. And then I'm just gonna keep going. I'll take my next one. Well, this is the coronavirus right here. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'll line that up and sew that on, line that up, sew that on, and just keep going. So we talked before that um, the amount of fabric that you use depends on how close you put them together. This happens to be three quarters of an inch. I know that because I measured it. Normally what I do, um, I think with that rug over there, it's a half of an inch. Um, you could do an inch, it doesn't really matter, but keep in mind that when this is washed, what's going to happen is it's going to kind of stand, it's going to stand up a little bit, right? And so you're going to see whatever that is that you've put down there. And so it just sort of depends. You know, if you really like this fabric that's underneath here, then that's great. If you look at this one, you can see that this is about the same distance apart. But again, that fabric really looks fine with these. And again, see? See the white there? Look up here at this end. See the difference? So you do kind of want to... And this fabric that's underneath there, it's kind of a wild printed fabric anyway. All right, so anyway, so this is why the amount of fabric that it takes varies depending upon the thickness of the, the raggedy um, part that you want, the size that you want, and how close together. There's one tiny last step that you have to do, and, and this is very important because it's not what you think. Um, you do have to chenille this, you have to cut this. Now, what happens with chenille, let's talk about that for just a second, and again, we do have a video that covers all of the chenille aspects, but you have to keep in mind that what happens with chenille is you've got threads that read one way and threads that run another. And so when you cut something straight across, that's why you have kind of these funny little shreds because all of these threads will kind of shred off. And the same thing happens when you cut it the other way. I don't know if that necessarily makes sense, but um, when you chenille something and you cut it diagonally, um, what will happen is that it will stop. So you'll just have these tiny little threads that burst up. And so the key to that is cutting it on the diagonal. So typically when we do chenille projects, we're either sewing on the diagonal, we're cutting on the diagonal, or you might have thought with this that it would work perfect to do bias strips. It would have, and I think our very first prototype, we did that and we realized that was not very smart because that meant we had to cut every single two and a half inch strip ourselves. We couldn't use some pre-cut strips, which we thought was way, way easier. So instead, we decided that we would go ahead and do our regular two inch strip, but we're just going to cut it on the diagonal. So I'm gonna come around here on your side. 
And scissors, you know, you can use a regular pair of scissors and that's okay, but what I find with my regular scissors is they start to get dull. You're only cutting about an inch in, and so the tip of your scissors have to be really sharp. So if you're cutting back here, um, it's not going to work. What's nice about these is these are super sharp, and these are spring action. So what that means is that you cut, but then they open back up. And so you would think that that movement isn't a big deal, but if you have any kind of arthritis at all, you're only doing 50% of the work because the rest of it, it just automatically opens. So there's a big snips, um, and then there's sort of the smaller ones. And what are, I think these are like $10 more. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, is That's the difference. So these are super nice. They stay sharp for a long time. They look like gardening shears. And so what's gonna happen is when it comes time to snip this is again, instead of you know cutting it this way, which is what you might see with a lot of chenille, you're going to cut it on a 45 degree angle. So you're going to cut it and you're just gonna eyeball it. You don't have to measure anything. Just cut it on that 45 degree angle. And if you have some weird thing like this, just snip that off, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go to our next one. We're gonna go ahead and snip that off. We're gonna measure in here. And I cut, I don't know, about every half inch. And I'm cutting right up to where I've sewn. Do you see that? So let's do another one. We're gonna come up. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off that edge right there. And then I come in. I'm making this look difficult because I'm standing funny. And so what's happening is I'm cutting this on a 45 degree angle. And so this is all going to chenille. And all of these threads are going to burst because otherwise, see on the edge right here, see like this thread right here? This is what happens on these long edges. So the first time that you wash it, all of these weird little edge pieces, it's gonna be a great big mess in your washing machine. And so it'll, all of these end pieces are going to come off and then all that's going to left be left are just those little burst pieces. So you're gonna cut the whole rug. After you cut the whole rug and go ahead and do that, you're done. All you have to do is wash it. It always looks it always looks funny. Anything that's a chenille project, when you're first done with it, you think, well, that doesn't look cute at all. Wash it. Okay, I thought that I would just talk a little bit more about how to mark this in case you decide not to use a diagonal fabric. I Again, I like the idea of the fabric that has the diagonal because all of these lines have been marked for me. If you can't find something that you like, we happen to have multiple selections on our website. You might find other fabric that has a diagonal line that will work perfectly in the color scheme that you're wanting. If you find something that has kind of a wide diagonal, it doesn't matter. You could just kind of eyeball right in the middle there as you're going on the line, and this will work perfect. If not, and you need to mark your lines, I just wanna show you how to do that. Again, I really like the diagonal feature of this. It just looks less DIY to me. I think it looks like a really cool rug. You don't have to do the diagonal. If you want to go ahead and do straight lines going horizontally or straight lines going vertically, that would be perfectly okay, but it is important that you mark those lines if you're not using a fabric that you're following. So I just want to show you how to do the 45 degree Line. So you're going to find on your ruler, and if I put it down here, maybe you can see this a little bit better. We're going to find the 45 degree angle, and we're gonna bring that angle over so that it lines up right on the edge of our fabric. So I'm gonna come down so that I can start really about a half an inch from the edge. And you just want to make sure that you're using either a water soluble or an iron off fabric marker. And then see here where I've got my half inch mark, I'm lining that up on the mark that I just made and I'm making a new mark. And again, it's whether you want it to be half inch, you want it to be three quarters of an inch, it's up to you. The closer together, the more fabric you need. 
you do want to make sure that you're using a fabric appropriate marker. Again, something that's water soluble, iron off, whatever you'd like. So anyway, that's all we're gonna do, is you're just gonna mark these marks, and then again, then we're gonna go back to the way that we were doing it before when we were lining our fabrics up on that line, so you've got the fold right up on the line as you're sewing those. One other thing I just wanted to mention, uh, because I think you're probably going to ask about it, is what about some sort of an anti-slip on the back of this? You certainly could sew on some sort of a grippy factor, but I have to tell you that what I've noticed is that because we use just a high quality product, this is going to far outlast this. Think about how many times you've thrown away a rug in the past, and oftentimes it's because this starts to get all icky and, and starts to tear. So what I do instead is I just take the same stuff and I just use it as a rug grip. So I lay it down and then I put my rug over the top and then my rug is a no slip rug, but I can wash them separately and replace this for pennies when I need to and I don't have to worry about my rug. So that's what I do, but you can do whatever works best for you. All right, I hope you've enjoyed all of this. I just want to point out these, if you go to www.fabricpatch.net, these happen to be some of the current uh, monk's cloth colors that we have. We have lots of linen also that you can choose from. Same idea, just a couple dollars more. There's lots of different diagonal type prints that you can use. And of course, lots of different jelly rolls that you can use. The other thing that makes your job a whole lot easier are the spring action scissors. So I hope you've enjoyed our video and I hope you love your rag rug www.fabricpatch.net.